Today I'm tearing down a Nissan or Infiniti VR30 DDTT. It's a 3 liter direct injected dual overhead cam twin turbo V6 that came out of an Infiniti Q50 with just 60,000 miles on it. Pretty premature for a bad engine. Now this engine's also in the new Nissan Z, although I'm sure a few things are different since this is a little bit older. Now this engine came in without turbos, without intake manifold. It's missing a few parts. It's going to be a lot simpler than last week's teardown, and that might be why I chose it. Now this engine came compliments of Phil at Gap Automotive in South Florida. He sent this to me with a BMW B58 close to two years ago, and I've been kicking around this thing for quite some time. It's time to rip the mandate off, we'll tear it down. And he told me that this engine still ran. It threw some cam codes, it had a bad turbo, and that the inside looks suboptimal. The VR30 DDTT has two different power outputs. There's a 300 horsepower version, which is what I believe this engine is, and there's also a 400 horsepower version. And I think primarily the biggest difference is the turbochargers and the tuning, although there could be some other differences throughout. I'm not that well versed in these engines. I haven't really gotten into selling these engines as good. This is, however, the second one I've torn down on the channel. The very first thing we're going to do is pull the plugs. The plugs actually look really good. I didn't really expect to find any bent straps or damaged electrodes. Everything looks pretty good. Next, we're gonna pull the passenger side or right hand valve cover. If I remember right, these are, yeah, they're on there pretty well. Nothing stuck forever when you have blue. Oh man. I just got a peek. It's not good, guys. Sweet molasses. Well, it's been a while since we've had an engine on the channel that looked quite like this. You know, oil does have a life. This is like plastic. I can, I can literally scrape till my heart's content. There's so much sludge built up yeah I, I i i'm agreeing with you phil i don't think they uh i don't think they ever change the oil in this thing this is going to be messy real messy let's go to the other side this side's already missing bolts i suspect phil was in here or one of his guys was in here doing a little bit of diag oh yeah that's bad that's bad. I wonder if this person changes their oil any better now after replacing a four or five thousand dollar engine. Probably not. Nobody learns from this. Next we'll pull the lower manifold. Well the intake ports are carboned up and there's quite a bit of carbon on the top of the valves. And some debris probably from sitting in the shop without an intake. But it's not as bad as we've seen. It's certainly better than most of the DI BMWs we look at. Yeah, I don't see anything obviously wrecked. Ooh, a tag. The next thing I'm going to do is remove this bracket, which is actually a crash bracket to protect the high pressure fuel pump from rupturing in an accident. So we're gonna take this bracket off. We'll take the, all the fuel lines and the high pressure fuel pump off. Next, we're going to remove this rear part. It's like a cam cover, not quite the valve cover. Wow. It's like a horror movie. I said horror. Now we'll go to the other side and remove the vacuum pump. Well, they didn't really give you a place to pry. So. It still vacuums. Now this rear cover.
Next, we're going to remove the electronic thermostat housing and this coolant pipe that goes towards the heater core. Oh, I remember I have to remove this the sensor for some unknown reason to get this bolt out. Why did they not just angle this down just a just a little? Then I could have I'm pretty sure I complained about that in the last video. Oh yeah. I just don't I just don't know who does who does it that way. Well, it's empty, so that's good. Well, there's a little bit of coolant in there. Not too bad. Next up, the water pump. And it actually looks like this has been leaking. There's lots of uh, dried coolant and corrosion here at the front of the pump, but, oh, I hear fluid in there. I should get a pan. All right, now that we've got a pan, I don't have to worry about making a mess. So yeah, I, I'm getting smarter about this. I'm making less messes. Whoa, I don't, know if, I don't know if I can show that. I don't know if I'm good enough to blur this out, but you can definitely tell that the weep hole's been leaking. It's been weeping. It is not a good water pump. Not at all. Next, we're gonna pull these covers off, although I don't think I have to to get the timing cover off. I wanna see what it looks like behind here before we pull that cover. I'm sure these will just pop right off with all the sealant that's on here. More molasses. Wow, that's so sludgy. I can totally tell why this thing was throwing cam codes already. Can you imagine the little bitty orifices that are in these cam, these variable cam gears? Really? That just broke. No, well, it's still usable, but. Blue, you've been working out. Uh, that's a first for me. Man. Yummy. I know it's really hard to see because, uh, oh, um, well, that's bad. That's really bad. Uh, well, I'll just show you. So this is the, the good side. I'm gonna use that term loosely, but the chain is on the gears and it's just really sludgy in here. But then when we go to the other side, hmm, that's a little, little not good. Um, yeah, there's some, there's some bad stuff that has happened with the timing chain back there. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think this thing ran. I mean, it did it once, but it, it didn't when it was pulled out. Next, I'm going to drain whatever is in the oil pan. Molasses, barbecue sauce, tar. Oh man, well, that's been in there for a while. Well, there was, there's some oil in it. Move this down here before catastrophe strikes. And I'm going to rotate it to where more of the oil comes out because the, the design of these oil pans is pretty poor. Uh, unfortunately, you can't do that when you change the oil in your car. You have to jack it up on one side, I guess. I've heard that these pans will hold almost an extra quart of fluid on level ground because of the oil drain location. All right, I've got the plug back in it. We're going to rotate this thing over. Hopefully it doesn't make too much of a mess. I do expect some this though. Nope. Some oil. You know, you know, th this is really annoying here. It's almost like this engine has a block drain. Well, that works. Except for that. 
My hand is the gutter. I rotated the engine over for a couple reasons, but the main reason is that I need to remove the lower oil pan to get the bolts out that hold the upper pan to the timing cover so that I can peel the timing cover off. The other reason is I wanted to talk about this, which is my least favorite part of this engine. This is the lower oil pan. It is plastic or composite, and I am not a fan, not at all. The design of this pan is not very good because of where the drain plug is, and I'll show you that when I get the pan off. But I have seen many of these things cracked, many of them. In fact, this pan be being plastic has spurred the development of several different aftermarket oil pans. For about 450 bucks, you can buy an aluminum oil pan to replace this piece of plastic. Oh, bad. So sludge is, uh, this is sludge. This is um, what happens when you don't change the oil ever or never. Both of those words apply. Uh, the other thing I really don't like about this pan, I already mentioned this, is the drain plug is here. And because of the, you can't really tell because of the amount of sludge in this pan, but this will still hold almost a quart of oil before it reaches the drain bolt. It's not a great design. And I understand some of you are saying, well, you know, Ford uses a, plastic pans in the trucks. Yeah, they, they do, but it's a truck. It sits a foot or more off the ground. This is in a car, a rather low car, might I add. So this may be hard to see on camera, but it is also really sludgy. The first thing I noticed is a little bit of some two springs in the pickup. I was going to make a spring joke, but we only get one spring a year. Where are those from? And why are those in there? I'm sure we'll find out. And as I mentioned, to get these bolts, you can kind of make the bolts out here that hold the upper pan to the timing cover. You have to get this piece of plastic off. So got the lower pan out of the way. At this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and rip the upper pan off and get it out of the way as well. Just a whole bunch of 12 millimeter headed bolts. I think I've got them all. We're gonna find out pretty quick. Still feels pretty stiff over here. Don't, not what I meant. That didn't help me. I can't really, I really need to clean this to make sure I've got all the bolts out. Is the glue just that good? Oh, you know what? Those 10 millimeter bolts right there. It's always the obvious ones. Turns out that when you have all the bolts out, it comes apart a lot better. All right, let's rotate this thing back over and start pulling the timing cover. Those are just bolts that must have dropped when I was taking it apart. I think. Next, let's get this crank bolt out of the way. Oh, it'll come right off, right? Well, that's not spinning and the engine's turning backwards. Bad stuff's happening. So I noticed something kind of slipped out when I pulled the crank bolt out and mm, that's broken chain. Now this should just slide off. God, I love that. Now, just a couple 10 millimeter bolts. All right, I think that's all the 10s. Wait. That was unnecessary. Oh, and there's another one. All right, that's all the 10s, I think. Except for these down here. All right, is there anything else? Any more 10s? Speak now. Now just a couple 12s. Now some 14s. Okay, did I miss anything? I don't think I did. And if I did, it's gonna be really obvious. Now we need to Figure out how this comes off. Ooh, it looks like a place to pry right here. Still bolted tight. Hmm. I bet it's gonna have some dowels. I did get all the bolts out, right? Hmm. Some pretty strong glue. 
Now the other question is, are there any holes in here? Oh wait, does this have to come off? I'm sure this doesn't have to come off, does it? This might have to come off. And is that a bolt that goes through? That might be a bolt that goes through. Wait, is that not a... No, that doesn't go all the way through. All right, well, at least that's ruled out. Let's see if we can give it a couple knocks. That's gonna do nothing. That cannot go through, right? They wouldn't do that. They might do that. Let's take it out. No, that does not go through. The thermostat housing bolts wouldn't go all the way through, would they? Would they? These wouldn't go all the way through, would they? No. Okay, well, I think there's a bolt behind here. There it is. Ew, what is, look at this slug. I gotta put my tools in there. That sounds wrong too. It's all bad, this is all bad. My tools are never gonna recover from this. My 12 millimeters never gonna forgive me for this. Cause it's a 10. Now that we've discovered there's two more bolts, I bet it comes off a little easier now. Ooh, Ooh snapping. Now we got some, what was that? Oh no. Oh, bad. I see what's going on here, I think. Oh, gross. Well, the first thing I noticed as I was pulling that cover is this. It has some pretty deep marks in it. And this is actually part of the casing of the cam gear. I don't know how that fits in there, but it's broke. And there's some pretty deep marks in there. I wonder what left that. And here's the chain. And it looks like I just dropped a guide, but yeah, that chain snapped. So definitely trashed a chain. Well, there's a better look at the broken cam gear. Not quite sure what caused that. And then this is where the chain ran. Looks like this guide is just, it's missing a huge section from right here. There was something that went there. The rest of this looks super sludgy. It's, it's bad. This is all really terrible looking. It should never, uh, I know the camera may not be picking this up that well and I apologize for that, but it's sucking all the light out of the room. And there was a little bit of damage to the inside of the timing cover. And then I found this piece which I don't know what that goes to, not yet anyway. Yeah, this is, uh, we're gonna put that in the parts washer and see if we can salvage that. All right, now we're gonna strip the rest of the timing system. We're gonna get this broken guide off. We'll get that guide off, get that chain off. It never stood a chance. That one's good though. Now for the tensioners. Ratcheting style. Man, look how sludgy it is. It's just crazy. Just change your oil. That's all you gotta do. Pretty sure this is a six millimeter. Yes, that rail looks fine. That is not a six. Why would that be any other size than what the other side was? And the final icky timing rail. Somehow, still good. Now we should be able to, oh, well, I thought that slid off there, but I guess not. So now we can At least I get one chain out of this. Next, we'll remove this cover. Oh, 
came off pretty nice. Time to crack the cam caps off of this side. Surprisingly, they come off pretty easily. Uh, holding them is not a great time. Ew. Well, surprisingly, the cam journals aren't really that bad. The cam caps aren't heavily worn. It doesn't look like a bunch of metal debris went through here. I am pretty surprised with the overall condition so far. And here's a better idea of how absolutely sludgy this is. I know I have seen worse, but this is still bad. Cam journals look good though. Before we get the main head bolts loose, there are two that hold the front of the head to the block. Now, I don't really remember how tight these were on the last one I did. We will find out. Oh, they're, uh, they're tight. Yeah, they're very tight. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna rotate this so that I can use my weight to crack these loose. <laughs> Let's try a little more. Yeah, they're tight, but they don't make a lot of noise. Oh, I can't even grab them. All right, his head should just pop off. What? All right, it's coming off one way or the other. That do it. Well, are you done dropping lifters yet? I think it's done. The block looks really, really good. I don't really see a lot of wear in the cylinders. There's no marks from piston to valve contact. Everything's in one piece. This was the side that had a chain still intact. I'm sure this will pass the test with flying colors. The surface of the head looks really good as well. I don't see any damage at all. I think this is going to be a good cylinder head, but it's gonna take several runs through the parts washer, which we will, we will definitely do in this video. Now it's time to crack them loose on this side. Uh-oh, those are loose. Same story on this bank. Cam caps don't look too bad. The cam itself, not really that damaged, not that worn. I mean, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it certainly isn't scarred up like it had a bunch of debris in the oil. But there is the broken cam gear. And what I think happened is while it was running, that chain must have walked off of this gear and gotten caught between the timing cover and the cam gear and broke that section of cam gear off. Unlike the other bank, this head doesn't have any perimeter head bolts. It just has the eight combustion chamber surrounding head bolts. So we're gonna go ahead and get those out now.
Okay, let's get blue. Get this thing cracked loose first. Since we already know how this is gonna act. Let's see if we can get this off. Whew. Why so why so tough? Well, this side doesn't look too bad. I was looking pretty closely to see if there were any dings in pistons from valves. And I don't really see any. Cylinder walls look okay. This one though, right there and there. And right there and there. Definitely made contact with uh, intake valves. Not so much exhaust valves, but I bet you it did bend two intake valves. Let's go take a look at that cylinder head. So here's the cylinder head. The side looks pretty good. And even this cylinder, this is the one that would have made contact. There's some slight marks right there. It's pretty much all you can see, but I don't trust that those valves aren't bent. I mean, maybe, maybe we get lucky what I'll likely do is put the plugs back in it and fill it full of fluid and let it sit for a while and see if any fluid runs past them. That's a good way to tell if they're bent without removing them. And we have to do our test in the name of science. Everything seems good. The next thing I'd like to do is get the oil pump chain off. So we'll get this guard off first. Now this might We have to do something about that. So I know how it spins, and you guys are probably saying, well, that's what's wrong with the engine because this gear is spinning. Well, this isn't keyed. And what happens, I mean, this part is keyed, but the oil pump gear isn't keyed. I know in the last VR30, a lot of comments said that because this spun, that's why the engine was bad, but that's not at all what the problem was. The clamping force from the bolt and the crank pulley sandwiches this all together and since the oil pump doesn't need to be keyed but this does it forces this that friction between this gear and the rest of the crankshaft to drive with the crankshaft so this doesn't spin when that bolt and harmonic balancer are in place all right now we got to figure out how to get that gear off we're going to try a few things this is going to work or not ha 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 that worked Look at that, a little mini chain. Now we can remove the oil pump. Normally we'd be blasting this oil pump apart, but this may have some value. Now I know it's gonna take uh, a lot of cleaning to make this any kind of usable. Let's see if there's anything in the pickup. I don't think there's anything in the pickup. And because we haven't seen any really torn up metal uh we haven't seen any torn up cam journals yet uh i don't really want to take this apart because it likely won't go back together so now that the oil pump chain is gone that slides right off and then this has one keyed section to slide off as well the woodruff key only sits in the very front of the crank i'll show you that at the end of the video once the crank is out it doesn't key all pieces together i don't know why they did it that way but that's just the way they did it. Now we're gonna prep the bed plate for removal. We need to take this out of the way because it blocks one of the bolts. Just need a little extra help there. Sludgy. Now we're gonna remove all the 12 millimeter bolts on the outside perimeter of the bed plate. Now the main cap part of the bed plate. Let's see how this turns over. Oh yeah, it's really nice. I think this is a pretty nice condition short block, but we're gonna just blast it apart anyway. Start on the front, work our way towards the back. It's 
cleanest way possible. These things basically just fall right out of the bore. Turn it over. Man, it just doesn't want to let go. That took a little extra force. These things, I can't believe how easy they are to come out of the board. You can basically breathe on them and they're out. Now the crank should just lift right out. Well, the main bearings are pretty worn. That one's got some damage to it. Definitely does not look like a 60,000 mile engine. And the rod bearings are even worse. If I pulled a 60,000 mile engine apart that had bearings that looked like this, I would think it had odometer fraud. But after seeing the amount of sludge in this engine, it makes sense. It definitely makes sense. And I had made a comment about how easy the rods and pistons came out. And I think these dinky little rings are the reason. I mean, these things, there's not much there. Low tension rings. Now I've heard that when you um, remove certain components, you backspace these these engines, that they they smoke. And I could see why. Look at the tiny little oil rings these things have. Now the pistons are actually in pretty good shape. There's not a lot of skirt wear, and only the one here has damage from making contact with two valves. It's not terrible. It's just notable. Somehow the crankshaft looks really nice, which is good because this does have some value. It will need a polish. I wouldn't just slap it in and call it good. It's going to need at least a little bit of attention, but it's not like it tore up a bearing or spun anything. There's no signs that it had a whole bunch of heat in it. Now, one thing I did want to talk about, I've already mentioned, here's the Woodruff key, the keyed crank. And this is the oil pump drive gear. Now this fits on here. In one position it slides past it. And then it rotates freely. When I pulled the last VR30 apart, everyone jumped onto the bandwagon of that's why the engine was bad. But what happens is that I can't get this on here. That's what happens. This slides on. And then your crank pulley sits on top of this and the bolt sandwiches everything together. That way this is still keyed from the keyway and this is set with friction. And that's how that doesn't spin on the crank. The bores in this engine are in really nice shape. The cross hatching is still very, very visible. I don't see a lot of vertical wear. This is an excellent builder block, which is good. I'll do pretty well on this core. There's really nothing too notable. It looks really nice. This cleaned up pretty good. Not as good as other stuff has cleaned up. This was a big challenge for our parts washer. And in fact, I'm probably gonna have to change the uh, fluid that's inside the parts washer. It's a little um, sludgy. It, it kind of matches the way the inside of this engine looks. But it did clean up, and it cleaned up enough for us to tell if there's damage. There's still some some ick on this head. Bottom side looks pretty good. I think these heads are going to be all right. I think the one will need a couple of valves, but it's not terrible. Timing cover cleaned up nice also. Still some more dirt in there, but it's not bad. There's the damage from what I believe the chain going over the side of the cam gear while it was running. It's not too bad. I definitely think this is still worth some money. I don't think anyone's going to care about that damage. Another thing I wanted to look at is the oil filter. It has a 
aftermarket non OEM filter. So at 60,000 miles, this thing's at least had one oil change. That's what we know. Not enough. Not enough. You know, I, I think this person got the most out of this oil change. It's not something to brag about because it ended up costing them thousands of dollars to fix. This was obviously neglect. I bet this car had two or three oil changes in a 60,000 mile period. That's what it takes to make your oil, the inside of your engine, look that bad. There is no situation in which oil is more expensive than an engine because when you buy an engine, you still have to buy oil. So you may as well just change your oil, check your oil on a regular basis. I don't ever want to sound preachy. I just, I'd like to drive home the point that oil is always cheaper and no one has ever blown their engine up because they changed their oil too often. It just doesn't happen. This was one of the messier teardowns I've done. I think we've seen a little bit worse as far as the neglect category, but for such low miles, I don't know. That's pretty bad. However, most of the parts survived this ordeal, probably because it blew up before it had a chance to do a lot of damage. So if you'd like to buy any parts out of this engine or anything else I've torn down, or if you'd like to buy parts off of the worst G8 GT in the country, it's terrible, but it runs somehow. I'm going to leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com and peruse our inventory. You can check out our recent parts cars and see what loose parts we have in stock. If you don't see what you're looking for, you can fill out our part request form, which sends us an email of exactly what it is that you're chasing. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one. What a waste. You know, this is totally avoidable. All this sludge, expensive engine. People should really be ashamed of themselves. I would never do this. I hope this person has to ride a bicycle now.